Hello, everyone. It's December 24th, 2019. It's Christmas Eve, but it's also Tuesday, and that means it's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this edition of Harp Tuesday. So I just published and spent the day recording Carlos Salzedo's Concert Variations on O Tannenbaum, or O Christmas Tree. And it's, uh, it's a fantastic piece, so much fun to play. I learned it many, many years ago, and it's, he, he treats O Tannenbaum to a number of variations. And I thought I'd just go over those and give you an, an overview of them. So it starts with a fairly simple treatment of the theme. I always find it helpful to try and be aware of that very first one, just that dotted rhythm. So that it doesn't become so that we make sure that that uh, dotted eighth is long enough and that the sixteenth is nice and short maybe even replacing a little bit early just to give it a nice crisp start and then this middle section i know i have a tendency to kind of want to rush that a little bit. So again, this whole set of variations are great ones to practice with a metronome, and that one is when I always just check with a metronome. I think 96 is a pretty good tempo. Most of these metronome markings I think are pretty reasonable. Then we get variation one, which has all these. And here I would want to be really aware of the insides of those arpeggios. So just like a rolled chord, where we'll hear the first note, we'll hear the top note, but we want to make sure that we're hearing the middle and the inside of that. Same thing with these arpeggios. It's just much more impressive and sounds much better if we hear all of those rather than... Being aware of where the tune is. Then again, this middle section, I find it a little bit always bothers me a little bit because the I feel that the I have a hard time having the beats I don't want the, the this I want that to be uh, a quarter note and it's not it's the and of beat three instead of beat three itself so it's one two oh, sorry one and two and So uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit interesting that way. This um, second bar of the fourth line, yeah, it's potentially helpful to be aware of that G as bring it out because it's part of the tune, and then it also helps us know that that's a eighth note there, and we're not going right into a set of triplets or something like that. The tune right on this particular variation, we get. Sorry. Et cetera. So it's a little bit different than we might expect to hear it. Um, but again, a great one to practice slowly. I just do two, two here in the left hand. And then two, three. For whatever reason. So again, you could put the metronome on on the eighth notes, right? And take it fairly slow, even 104 on the eighth notes instead of on the quarter. And great way just to make sure everything's lining up the way you want it to be. Um, being aware that last time through this, because of course the structure of the piece, right? Is basically it's A, A, B, A, right? We got, we got a four bar phrase, repeat, middle section, and then back to the first one. And so, but in general, that last statement of A is always a little bit different. Salzado does something a little bit different to show that it's the ending one. And so this one, 
jump up the elbow can help with that right to help move the whole arm and shift back and be ready to find that uh, jump up there so then we get to variation two this is a lot of fun uh, and it's a great spot to practice that uh, being able to play two and four at the same time with three and one on the strings. Bunch of those. Some nice finger independence. And um, again, in a way, the rhythm's a little bit peculiar. You can see my when I learned this years ago, my teacher marked a reminder on those quarter note chords because we get so many eighth notes, but that these, for example, can feel... There can be a tendency to want to maybe rush them and making sure that we feel three and one so this one right we can want to have that high c there second bar the second line we can tr there's maybe a tendency to want to try to treat that as a quarter note anyway so just just again these little spots where it's maybe not quite as we might expect. Lovely little B section. That's fun, right? The hands all sort of right next to each other, but not actually hitting into each other. And again. A different ending. And you'll notice I do a little bit of tiny bit of extra muffling in there with the left hand at various times to just have a moment to I'll reach down and stop something etc uh, etc et so then oh this, yeah, yeah. so that little marks this double muffle right we get uh, So I guess what do we get four four so it's And I'm in general I'm just I'm just never happy doing a double muffle in the middle of a piece when it's because it, it, it's so easy for people that I've had to, you know people start applauding at that point and these days I I just do a left hand muffle it gets rid of most of the sound right but somehow visually it helps let people know that there's still something coming up. Just something to play around with. And then we get this lovely third variation where... where we've got the harmonics playing the tune in the right hand and the left hand. So then, of course, this is the same. It would be... Uh, They'd, they'd be right in next to each other. And in fact, all of this, the left hand sort of accompaniment is actually slightly higher in pitch. But the fact that these are harmonics can help us hear them as the tune. And I think this is a good spot to bring the left hand volume down and play around with a balance between them. This one, I think variation three is very much about the balance between the hands. This is a little bit tricky just in terms of the, the sort of contrary motion. Oh, sorry. Right, because we're going up in the right hand, left hand's got this one, four, one, four. Um, and then he makes use of the E sharp as a F substitute. So that when we play this F harmonic, we're not stopping that same note or no risk of buzzing, whatever. Etc. Uh, oh, uh, the B section, the middle part. 
I would be careful of not landing too loudly on this middle C. We're, we're, we're way up here. It's easy to kind of be soft on these smaller strings. Now we could maybe treat it as a bit of an ostinato there, keep returning to that, but um, for me, I'm always thinking just a little bit gentle on that, on that reach down, because it's, it's a kind of a fast jump, a big jump, and not wanting to emphasize it too much. Then we get variation four. In some ways, to me, that's actually the hardest, just this little left hand. And things. Uh, I think in the music video that I recorded today, um, I took the tempo at a pretty fast tempo, maybe faster than the 126 he's suggesting. Um, and you certainly don't need to, and that makes it a little bit easier, but all these disconnected jumps here in the left hand are, are kind of challenging. 2-4 to start with, just because that means it's a little easier rather than say 1-3, we're a little bit closer to where we're going next. Right, so... I tend to ignore the forte to some extent. I, I, I'm not sure that I like it coming in screechingly loud at that point after the lovely little harmonic variation. Um, and that also maybe potentially makes it a little bit easier. Certainly don't, I wouldn't feel as if you have to really, really hammer out those left hand chords. Um, so thinking light, thinking a bounce, obviously at a slow speed in particular, you can use that wrist motion, right, hinging at the wrist to bounce up and then drop back down again, to relax a little bit between each one. So uh, I, in that one I always just, I just try to think really, really light. section is another one where I feel sometimes I have a tendency to, to maybe rush that a little bit. So again, check with the metronome. And again, a different ending. Right, jump up, getting, preparing. Just don't let it catch you by surprise to be here and ready to jump up there. It's not, it's not too bad. Uh, so again, those left hand left hand really hard really hard you can get away to the listener you know if, if, you, if you maybe miss a note here there it's not going to be the end of the world but uh definitely a challenging challenging thing something the heart doesn't do that well right it's, it's so much better when we can connect then we get variation five so tempo comes back down pesante this enjoying this now we've got the tune down here some doubling right within harmonics with this thinking again about the balance of not having the right hand be too it's just a little it's just a little fill it's a little ornamentation up there I can see this being a, even slower, right? Um, whatever, whatever. Um, or or pushing the speed a little bit. I, I don't know, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, fun fun little fun little variation. And then that, of course, leads us into variation six, which is a real um, it's kind of showstopper. Though it's funny because in many ways variation one perhaps sounds just as impressive or, or even more so, but it's so much easier, right? That just the, the way it's written out and falls under the hand is so much easier. Here we've got all these really fast notes. Now, it, presumably Salzado was expecting 104. I would say I probably do it about 88 uh, to the quarter. And you can see, I think my teacher marked these in, where just to be aware of where the eighth note beat falls. So it's, a, it's again, great to practice it with a metronome on the eighth notes. So click, click, um, let me see, let me turn this on. 
Oh, it can't be so. I'm not sure if you're actually going to be hearing that because of the position of my microphone. Um, Again, a great one to just just practice slowly uh, at that speed, thinking about the. I would imagine even a little bit of a crescendo going down that little run, um, and again the, the, those inside notes. It's, it, obviously, it becomes a bit of a blur at speed, but. <laughs> than done but again oh that nice crescendo tick 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 um moving ahead leading into each note and this beautiful run of notes um for me what i would say is i i, I trying to be aware of the one of the difficult parts is actually getting from that chord to the start of the run in time or so it's not so much the run, it's it's the getting there in time because we actually have an eight, uh, 16th notes worth of time to get there. Then when the B section is, is super fun, right? This. So much fun is this constant um, tremolo down here. So two, three, one. And the most difficult bit is actually when the left hand is no longer playing the tune when it's doubling up on this, in this case, a B sharp, you know, the C natural B sharp sound. So trying to be able to place at the last minute and place cleanly. Whereas when the right hand, uh, the left hand is here and the right hand is free to do its little thing. It's so much easier when we're not having to replace on that ringing string and, and, and um, coordinate the two hands so precisely between each other. And of course he's using the A sharp to become a B flat because we got the B flat while well, the B string is in sharp to double the C natural. So some, some excellent use of enharmonics. Be aware the, the left thumb is the tune note, so just don't let two overpower, right? We want to hear not this, but we want to make sure. That we hear the thumb on the tune. Um, Again, oh, at the end of this one, right, we have that different ending where again we're jumping up. Right, so we don't have we don't have a lot of time. We're down here. Again that little crescendo, that A, we'll probably hear the thumb, but of course we wear that as well. And then this lovely conclusion, sort of halfway, half through the uh, verse, right? Also doubling. I 
would think super short, short and sharp on those dotted rhythms. Sorry, whatever it is. Um, bring out that C sharp. Uh, I do, I do an octave here instead of playing and then switching to octaves. I just do an octave and do a first inversion in the right hand. I would try and bring out that left hand descending bass line. Whatever it is. Doubling again. Uh, so we're placing here, if it's not clear, right? We're placing 3-2 on the bottom of the next chord. We've got the octave. And that way, we, all we have to do is move the thumb. So... If you can, this 1-5-12, is that right? 1-5-8-12. One, one, um, obviously, you could do just a 1-5-8, but... I think I end up playing that F with 2 rather than 4. Um, yeah, I, I find it's okay. I can get down there in time. And then a nice dramatic end with that muffle. So, yeah, super fun piece to play. Uh, quite challenging, but quite worthwhile and a nice a nice workout. So, hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, hey, happy 2019. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the year. And I will see you on January 1st for my now traditional New Year's Day improv. And then um, the first Tuesday in January, I'll see you for the first Harp Tuesday of, two, of 2020. Can you believe it? So until then, bye for now. Cheers.